to invite Pawan Kafain to share our experience in this very important meeting. Uh, Pawan Kafan is an indigenous-led fund. Uh, our mission is to change the way that uh, philanthropy is done traditionally. Pawan is a mosquito name, uh, a word meaning something that is growing and strengthening. So all the pictures and images that I'm going to share are from our local partners in different parts of the, of the world. Uh, next, please. So the Pawanka Fund was created as a global indigenous-led fund in September of 2014 in the framework of the UN World Conference on Indigenous Peoples, and is led by indigenous leaders from different parts of the world, including North America, Latin America, Asia, Africa, Arctic, Pacific, and Russia. Pawanka Fund responds to the need of indigenous people based on relationship of trust, networking, and articulation between local and global processes. And the objective of Pawanka is to strengthen indigenous people's self-determined development through effective and strategic grant making and the objective is to revitalize traditional knowledge and learning system. Next, please. So this is just for, for you to have an idea of Pawanka Fund uh, of these six years of, of life. Uh, we have more than 300 local partners in, uh, from almost 60 countries of the seven sociocultural region of the world, that means 261 grants, and that reached 272 indigenous peoples in different regions of the world. So in this image, you can see the names of the different indigenous peoples in different parts of the world. Next, please. So Pawanka funds work with a great diversity of partners. So we uh, we are working with communities, with indigenous communities, but also with indigenous women organizations, elders or youth organizations, national, regional, uh, and global networks, indigenous with disabilities, territorial governments, group of pastoralists, farmers, nomads, mountain people, Icelanders, fishmen, readers, traditional healers, spiritual leaders, midwives, traditional authorities, judge. So this is to, to, to share that Pawan Kafan is working with local partners uh, in a very diverse way. Next, please. So Pawan Kafan is building a holistic, a holistic approach to grant making. So our model of grant making is based on different steps. So we have grant making, mentoring, learning, and sharing. These are our steps that we work in the grant making. We have different thematic cycles. Uh, our main issue is uh, uh, traditional knowledge revitalization, uh, but we also have issue a specific emergency fund during the pandemic, and we still have that emergency fund. And we have special cycles on different teams. And one of our special cycle is uh, on building resilience, climate resilience, because as all of you know, indigenous people are uh, the most affected people uh, on climate uh, change impact. So uh, one of our special cycle is on climate resilience building and how the indigenous, the revitalization of indigenous uh, knowledge and value can really uh, be strengthened to face this climate um, change impact. So next, please. So our, our grant making uh, are direct support to community led organization and networks uh, we establish long-term partnership. Our grants range from $10,000 to $50,000 in a multi-year. We support the recovery and the revitalization, uh, revitalization of indigenous knowledge and practices. And the selection process is through cultural due diligence criteria. So the criteria to select the partners, Pawanka Fan use cultural criteria on, on that selection. 
Uh, that mean uh, in indigenous partners that they are contributing to the well-being of their community or uh, the equity between men and women. So our guiding committee uh, de uh, defined eight cultural indicators that we use for the selection of our partners, but also in the monitoring and the follow-up of the implementation of the project. Yes, next please. So our programs of mentoring, learning, and sharing, uh, that means that we are not just doing a grant making, we are not just sharing finance support, we also accompany and support our partners in the design of the proposal. This is the, the mentoring role that Pawanka uh, had uh, in the implementation and all the process of monitoring and evaluation. We give technical assistance to our partners to fulfill the legal and administrative requirements. And also we promote exchange of knowledge and practices and peer-to-peer -peer capacity building process among our partners. We are building networks of solidarity and mutual support among our partners, and we are generating and disseminating uh, knowledge. Next, please. So Pawanka, uh, has a holistic approach to climate adaptation. Uh, in our grant making, we support more than 45 indigenous local community and organization in the seven sociocultural region that they are building collective resilience to face climate impact based on their traditional knowledge, applying a holistic approach and integrating innovation. So we are uh, promoting a learning process uh, between our partners that they are uh, building resilience to face climate impact. We implement a learning exchange. Uh, we have uh, so far seven regional meetings, uh, global climate resilience meeting, uh, where we could learn, um, of course, and, and, and share the different challenge and threat that our partners are sharing, but also how they are implementing solutions and strategies to face the climate impact. Next. So how does Pawanka support indigenous communities to build resilience and face climate impact? Well, first, recognizing the local expertise and knowledge of local communities. Making direct funding and partners have full control of the decisions of their projects. So we, are, we think that we support process and not project uh, because our partners are implementing this process at the local level and we are facilitating resources to those process. Uh, being flexible on requirement and reporting system, selecting partner, uh, partners and promoting learning and sharing based on cultural criteria. Next. Establishing partnership based on trust and indigenous values, supporting self-determination and indigenous governance system. So Pawanka is supporting indigenous people own empowerment process. Uh, it's not Pawanka that empower indigenous people. We are facilitating and accompany indigenous people in their own empowerment processes. This is uh, a, a change in the paradigm of the grant making where in many traditional mechanisms is the, the fund that empower or think that they can empower uh, their uh, partners or grantees. Uh, making efforts to reach indigenous community that otherwise would not have access to resources. So we uh, support the capacity building and the strengthening of the local organization and community to be able to access uh, funding. And we advocate for the transforming power relationship in philanthropy. So we work in many philanthropy networks uh, to try to uh, advocate for this, uh, for swift uh, the power relationship and to have a more equity uh, relationship between partners and funders. So next, I'm going to finish. Uh, we are going to share in the in the chat a link with a very brief video where you can see 
uh, the experience of many of Pawanka partners uh, building collective resilience because indigenous people are building uh, resilience in a collective way. Uh, you will see um, experience from the pastoralists in, uh, in Tanzania and Kenya on how the movement is a key strategy to face the climate uh, change impact. Or for example, in Rapa Nui, uh, the indigenous people uh, are building based on their traditional architecture and structures are building um, structures to manage and keep the water, the rainwater. We have other experience in Colombia about agro schools or seed banks in Cambodia and Thailand or uh, in Russia, they are implementing uh, or are they are researching uh, geomagnetic energy and the link with uh, uh, the climate prediction. Uh, or for example, in Alaska, they are developing, indigenous people are developing cultural mapping and they are linked this uh, process with the re recovery of the indigenous language. Uh, so please, if you, if you have time, uh, I invite you to, to watch the video to see uh, these different examples uh, and also uh, what resilience means for indigenous people. We have shared with our partners and uh, maybe they don't have a specific um, this, a specific word meaning resilience, but resilience uh, for indigenous peoples mean their self-governance, the strengthening of their self-governance system uh, means uh, water, land, natural resources, and of course, to have the strength to face the, the current challenge. Uh, so I, I want to, to finish here and, and please, if you would like to make any question, uh, it's most of welcome. We have time for just one or two quick questions for you, Mariana. So, um, so here are a few um, that, that we've sourced. Um, so given the wide experience, of course, you've just uh, clearly demonstrated on locally led adaptation, what would you say are the most critical challenges that you come across in dealing with and supporting um, this wide variety of, of locally led adaptation initiatives? Yes, well, uh... The, the lo our local partners are uh, experiencing many, many challenges. Um, the most important challenge of indigenous people at local level is the extractivism uh, and, the, of course, the, the, the global warming uh, related to climate change. Uh, but the extractivism is the uh, the extractive industry is one of the, the most uh, challenging issue of, the, of our local partners. And in our, um, in our view, it's of course very difficult to deal uh, with that, but uh, we can see how at local, par at local level, our partners are implemented um, a holistic approach. And this is very important because if we analyze the process and the strategies implemented at local level, it's not just one strategy focuses in one issue. It's, uh, it's holistic. We, uh, the local partner are implemented strategies at maybe uh, regional level of advocacy at the same time that they are implemented very local local action. So this uh, range of strategies and um, a fund that are is flexible at Pawanka and we allow uh, our partners to really look uh, and, and to decide which of the, the, the different actions they think that is a priority. I think that this is for us a, a, a key to, to support uh, the, the action at, at a local level. Thank you, Mariana. Another question coming through from the audience is, is going back to the, the, um, the uh, selection process that you mentioned, and you mentioned the cultural indicators for selecting partners uh, to deliver grants to. One of the questions coming through from the audience is if you could give us a bit more information on the concept of cultural due diligence and how it's applied through your grant making process. Yes, the, the cultural due diligence is the process of selection of our partners and is based on eight 
cultural indicators. Uh, I I can share maybe my my colleagues in the in the in the meeting can share the eight cultural indicator in in the chat so so you can read them. Uh, these eight cultural indicator uh, were selected by our guiding committee members. These uh, leaders, indigenous leaders from different region because Pawanka has is very uh, we have a rich diversity because we are dealing with uh, with a very different context and background uh, but also we need some common elements between the different uh, region and indigenous people so those eight uh, cultural criteria are common elements uh, priorities of indigenous people in the different regions. So the guiding committee uh, make collective decisions on the partners based on those indicators. So they uh, have to present and endorse a partner and they have to explain how this partner is aligned with these eight criteria, cultural criteria. So uh, later, the whole guiding committee uh, members in a, in a group, uh, they decide if this uh, partner is appropriate and they are aligned with our uh, cultural criteria. So this is the first step. After that, if this selection process go well and the partner was is selected, we have, you know, administrative and legal requirement, of course, because we are a legal entity and we need to fulfill a legal and administrative requirement. But it's not the first step of selection. And uh, when uh, the partner is selected, we support the process of uh, strengthening their organization to fulfill the legal and administrative requirement with the translation of material, for example, or even the certification of the organization. We accompany the partners to certify, to get their certification, to get their legal constitution of the organization. So this is like the, the, the second step. Uh, but in many cases, the, the selection of, of uh, partners uh, or grantees is based on technical criteria and the funds, they just review the proposals in a technical way. And in that case, uh, many of the funds go to NGOs, intermediate NGOs, and don't reach the indigenous communities or the indigenous uh, organization at local level. And that's why Pawanka wants to change that and is trying to build this process because it's not something that we we, we do the form the first uh, day we are building this cultural uh, criteria and cultural due diligence. Wonderful, Mariana. And just one final question for you um, to, to bring it back to the topic that Diana um, raised at the very beginning around financing. I'm wondering if you could say a bit about how global climate funds and donors might shift or, or better be able to support indigenous people specifically um, and get more finance behind their initiatives. Um, so if you were to give some guidance, for instance, to funders or, 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 the, or the donors seeking to replicate these kinds of approaches, what 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 um, what advice would you give? Yes, uh, well, our first advice is to uh, to base the relationship uh, on trust. So to start to build a relationship on trust with the indigenous communities and indigenous organization, and of course uh, recognize the local knowledge uh, that the indigenous people in their uh, places. Uh, has because uh, recognizing the technology is a way to change uh, the idea that the funders have the solution and uh, and the implementers they are just implementers. So in that way, to have a direct connection and a direct relationship uh, with indigenous communities and indigenous organizations is a way to change that and not to go through intermediate NGOs that maybe they have um, a technical expertise uh, uh, and they have experts uh, writing the, re the report or writing the proposal, but maybe they don't have the knowledge uh, of the local problems and the possible solution at local level. So when we see indigenous people with their rich knowledge and uh, really uh, expertise at local level, it's a way to, to change that process. 